I want to go back and discuss the golden mean in a little bit more depth conversation. Some of you who did the golden mean got a little confused and thank God Judy did the cheat sheet and spread it all out. Oh, a correction. On one of them, on the, on the 14 dimension, at the first number was six and three quarters. It should have been eight and three quarters. So there's just, there's, I found one error. On there's the one error. On the 14 <laughs> okay, so. So let us let us really quickly let me go back in and this is really light. I wish we would have gone a little bit darker. Um, I'm going to just use it as a point. Okay. Well, I can't draw a straight line. Artists don't know how to draw straight lines. We just control crooked ones. Um, so what we have here is we have this laid out in the golden mean. And the secret behind the golden mean is dividing your canvas in 1.618. And you end up with a line that, that, comes, see, that comes down here. And this would be roughly a third. It's a little bit more inside the third. And then the next one would be in here. That would be your second divided by 1.6. So what we do is we take the length. Um, let's see what this is. This may be, whose is this? Okay, well that would have been better. So what we have here is we have a canvas that's divided by um, uh, 1.618. And so we take the overall length and we divide it by 1.618. We get this measurement. And then we divide it by 1.618, whatever's left over, and we get this measurement. Now it's great in the calculator because when you have that measurement, you just push the divide number. Mm -hmm and then um, push equals, and then you get this number, and then you get this number. Now, the numbers that you get are 1.673777777. What you want to do is you want to take the, the number that's after the decimal point and either round, round it up depending on what the following number is. So if it's uh, 1.67, you want to make it 1.2. Okay, so you're always rounding up. Now, some of you are sitting there going, but my ruler says an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch and a half inch. Where do I get 1.2 or 1.3? Well, there's a little fudge room. I mean, you can buy rulers that actually break everything up into tenths. Okay, but our most rulers are sixteenths. So you have an inch, and if you cut that inch in half, you have 0.5. That's one half of that inch. And then when you cut that in half, you have roughly what, 2.5. Okay, so it's so you can you can kind of guess where that is. A lot of times it's directly, you know, 4.2 and you can or 4.5, you can figure that out, but you can cut that in half and roughly get there. So that's where these measurements come from. So the first measurement, you get this one, and then you break what's left over, you get this one, and then you break what's left over, and you get this one and this one. Now we have several lines that are here. It's important to get all the lines in. Then you want to flip it over and do the same thing over here because you've got the measurements over here, you need to have the measurements over there. And then you do the same thing over here. You take the, the width or the length no, in this particular instance. Width. width is this way. No, the length. Length. length is this way. Height. Height. The height. Take the height. Well, you won't even use that. So we take the height of it, we divide it by 1.618, we get this one. We always get the one greater to the measurement. Then we get this one, this one, this one, this one. And then if we reverse it, we end up with these lines. You get this grid on here. Now the whole point of doing the golden mean is these intersections are where you want to put the central focal point. These, this whole mathematical equation, all of this math, all of this, what we're doing here, is so that you can figure out how to divide space. So if you imagine a room that's empty and you're going to stick a couch in it, there's a place in that, especially women, they can put a couch somewhere and it will feel a little off and they'll walk up to it and they'll kick it. And they'll move it an inch and that little bit is that subliminal feeling of um, the golden mean. Where that is, is subconsciously where the, the golden mean measurement would be. Men are a little more mathematical. They'd much rather have this to go by. Women can look at it and go, move that couch over an inch, and they're, they're ready to go, okay? Um, that is, what we're trying to do with the golden mean is trying to figure out instinctually 
what we're seeing. Okay, we're just trying to put a mathematical measurement to that if we divided this canvas up. Do you guys need to do this? No, I hope not. No. Okay, after we know what this is, forget it. It is something that you use as a tool. I would appreciate you studying it for a bit so that you know how to do it and then forget it. The only time you need to know about it is when you're running into, a, into trouble. When your painting isn't working, one of the things that you'll pull up is whether or not I have the golden mean at play. Whether do I have the Feminacci spiral at play. Can I use that to benefit my painting? But don't first start off with the grid and then put everything onto it when you're creating your own original work. Rely on the fact, especially most of you as women, that you can feel where something should be and where it should not be. It's just a tool. It's not the way you want to live your life. Art is supposed to be instinctual. So don't make this into a mathematical project. That said, what if we do? So, this is a painting that um, Judy did. And Judy is somebody that really likes to get into facts. She wants to learn something and what if and really know it before she can let go of it. She's, she's the go-to person if you want to get something the way it should be. Okay. So she laid this out as a golden mean. And we're going to be talking about this as a homework assignment too. And so I briefly looked at it and she says, well, I wanted to know, I did the golden mean, I did the lines, and if you look very carefully, and I invite you after class to actually look at it, you can actually see the golden means running through here. And she put the highlight right here where these two intersections um, come to play. She actually put the highlight right where that is. Okay, that, if you can imagine that highlight being anywhere else, you can't. That's like a couch being in the right place in the living room. That is perfectly placed. These other intersections, and we're not going to go through them all, but these other intersections, like the, the top of the, the, the top here, the highlight on that, um, where to uh, some of these other intersections that she has, she's placed purposely on golden mean areas. Now, one of her questions was when we were in there, she says, do you plot a painting and adjust everything to land on a golden mean? Yes, when you're studying the golden mean, yes you do. You move it or push it. If you look through a viewfinder and you've got something out of place, move it and adjust it for right now because you're trying to feel what it's like when everything's in golden mean. When I'm out in nature, I'm always using the golden mean and I'm imagining where they are. When you start practicing and doing this, it will become automatic. So yes, while you're practicing, you move everything so it's on a golden mean. And then you forget it. Don't do it ever again. It will be subconscious. But if you don't do the practice, you won't subconsciously know what we're doing. So you have to go through the process. You have to do your homework. You're not going to learn a piece of music by just showing up to class. You have to go home and practice it. And that's what these classes are. Um, so and not only that, we looked at the Fumanachi's, um spiral, which is part of the golden mean. And we talked a little bit about that. And the spiral <coughs> comes into play right here. So we would see the spiral. And the spiral would come around and play. And she landed right perfectly, right? By accident. By accident. But it just, it just was a beautiful, beautiful thing. So compositionally, this is really great. So do you use a golden mean all the time? Yes. Do you mathematically have to uh, figure it out while you're practicing? Yes. Do you ever use it in the future like a math project? No. But the golden mean will give you some foundations that you can use as tools later on in your painting. It's a good thing to practice. Any questions? <laughs>